I want to welcome you all here tonight. Since we just heard hallelujah, it seemed like a good cue for me to then stand up and start the ceremony. <laughs> so um, thank you so much for all coming tonight to the 2018 Preservation Awards Ceremony. Um, this is an annual uh, ceremony that we do, and this is the 23rd year that the Preservation Commission has actually sponsored this. Feel free, by the way, to get up and still get food and drinks while this goes on tonight. Um, some of you already know who I am, but for those who don't, my name is Brandon Wilson, and I'm here tonight as Executive Director for the Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, this is the seventh time that we've actually held the ceremony here at the Somerville Armory. Uh, and it's a pretty grand place, wouldn't you say? Um, I don't know if you've been here before. When we first started coming here, most people had never been here, so I was kind of excited to introduce them. But for those of you that haven't been here before or don't know anything about the history, I thought I'd um, give you a little bit of background um, about the structure and the space that we're in, which is known as Arts at the Armory, this section of the Armory. Um, and this building was constructed in 1903, and it may be hard to believe, but this place once housed the Somerville Light Infantry for the Massachusetts Volunteer Militia. And after that, the Massachusetts National Guard was here. Uh, then it was periodically used um, for a variety of, of government functions, um, such as the local office of the National Census. The state of Massachusetts declared it a surplus building um, and, and then sold it by auction back in 2004. Two brothers who also own the Middle East restaurant in Cambridge uh, bought the huge structure from this auction process and they formed a development team to create a mixed-use building. And among its several uses here at the Armory, it serves as a community art center um, that offers wonderful cultural programming and gathering space. Um, not only for the city of Somerville, but for the whole Boston metropolitan area. The diversity of happenings that take place here are amazing. Um, they range from the indoor winter farmer's market, and um, hopefully some of you have been to that, and um, to the flea markets, the beer festivals, from wedding parties to political fundraisers, from citywide public meetings and charrettes of all kinds um, at special events. And a variety of classes also happen here, um, including weekly dance and music sessions, and there's even a full setup in here to teach children parkour. So a real multi-use facility. The development team for the Armory Project uh, worked with our office, the Historic Preservation, and they did a, ter a terrific job restoring our, uh, preserving many of the building's significant architectural features, um, and including the interior stairwells, which when you came in, hopefully you noticed, um, the turrets on the exterior, um, as well as the entry doors and windows. And when you entered, you might have noticed that, the, um, that they even saved the drawbridge, um, which like ramp into the front lobby, which was part of the original structure, and which was pretty complicated to, be, to do. Um, and they did such an impressive job preserving this building uh, that in 2009, this very same commission um, gave them an award that we will be giving each of you tonight. Um, so again, welcome to this historic um, uh, performance hall. And it's great to see all of you here tonight. Um, I'm delighted that there are so many familiar faces here in the audience. And um, I recognize that many of you from different walks of life and different um, opportunities I've had to work with you. And um, some of you have, are here because you've been in elected office, some volunteer for the city, um, and are on a board or at the Somerville Museum, or are students at Somerville High School. And tonight we're able to formally thank you um, for one of your city contributions, um, the wonderful work that you've done on your property or your artwork. Some of you are historic property owners, and at some point in time you've probably come before the commission, um, because you were doing some work on your property. But for those of you who have not, I'd like to explain briefly um, who the Commission is and what is its mission. The Somerville Historic Preservation Commission is comprised of 14 members, and they are all volunteers offering their time and expertise freely. They include architects, historians, contractors, realtors, and people who simply have a strong interest in local history and architecture. Many of the Commission members are here tonight, 
and some have even agreed to wear a name tag, uh, although they didn't identify themselves as a commissioner. Um, and if you could raise your hands, those of you that are here tonight, that would be great. Okay, in the back of the room, front of the room, great. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Um, you can also find material on our website, um, which gives a short profile of each of the members that's on the commission. The commission also has the benefit of two full-time staff who will work with the property owners, like yourselves, when you want to make exterior alterations um, to your historically designated property. And some of you already know who they are, which is Sarah White and Christy Chase. Uh, neither of them are here tonight because they had other meetings to go to, but I, I know that you know them. The Commission is truly delighted that um, all of you could come and share in what is truly a Somerville community event. Um, several communities in Massachusetts actually have award ceremonies um, and sponsor these kinds of um, events, but I don't believe that they're as all-encompassing as the one that we offer here in Somerville, and I'd like to tell you why. Um, and that's because the program is in progress all year long um, and involves people from all walks of life um, in the city. And these people include the high school students, the residential property owners, local businesses, the municipal and state officials, um, the property owners, and teachers and local reporters. And the wider public also benefits from the program through watching cable television, by reading interviews on the local media, and by coming to this final um, exhibit of the drawings that follow the ceremony over the coming summer and winter months that I'll describe to you in a minute. So now I'd like to give you a little bit of background about how this program actually happens and how you got here tonight, um, and actually how it affects uh, people's lives um, that are touched by it. The program actually begins in the fall when the Historic Preservation Commission members and its staff um, start to look at properties throughout the city that have been worked on in the recent past. And that's usually um, within the last two-year period. Sometimes we stretch it a bit because we know that working in older houses takes a while. Um, we consider cases that have come before the commission for review, and we seek nominations from neighbors, uh, from the public officials, friends, and the general public. We publicize the opportunity to nominate a property, either your own or someone else's, via notices in the local newspaper, on cable television, and by direct mailings and phone calls. And in some cases, we actually go out to the property itself and admire it and nominate it. In the fall, the commission staff um, also contacts the head of the CAD program um, at the Somerville High School to set up a schedule for interacting with his students. And this is our sixth year of working with Daniel Bendel, who is a terrific teacher. Um, he has expanded and upgraded the CAD program within the Center for Technical uh, Education and division within Somerville High School. And he has given the program even more of an architectural and pre-engineering bent to it, um, with very strong support from the head of the whole CTE program. Um, both of these people will be speaking here tonight. Daniel, the CAD instructor, teaches students about architectural history using the material from photos and handouts with illustrated text that we provide him. He also goes out to each of the properties to help the students take measurements and appreciate the surrounding streetscape um, that is often quite rich with the diversity of architecture. And we try to relate the material that we give to him um, to the city itself. And so what the students might be seeing on a day-to-day -day basis, um, but without a trained eye, so they probably don't pay any attention to it. Um, and as many of you know, we're lucky here in Somerville to have a pretty eclectic um, collection of architectural styles um, and historical traditions. And so we want them to be aware of that. Many years back, I decided to expand the program um, to include another department at the high school, and that's the art department. Uh, the prior head of that department, um, Dr. Elaine McMichaels, was a Somerville native, um, and she fully embraced the program and encouraged all of her teachers to participate in one of the many projects that the art students undertook during the winter and spring semester. Um, Lucy Prodwick um, then took over after Elaine retired, and she became the supervisor of visual arts for all the grades in the city, from kindergarten to the high school. She also highly encouraged um, several of her art teachers to participate in giving students an opportunity um, to draw, paint, photograph, or even make a ceramic piece um, of one of the award-winning properties. 
Last year, we invited yet another department at Somerville High School to participate, and that's a very innovative one. Um, it's known as Fab Lab, um, or at this high school, it's more better known as Fab Dill. And some of you might have already been there to participate in the program, and if not, I encourage you to try it. Uh, this year's instructor um, was not able to be here tonight to share um, uh, information about it, but um, someone else will do that to tell you about how the curriculum works. So as a result of this, we have a number of students and teachers involved from the Somerville High School. And tonight you'll be hearing uh, briefly from both Daniel and from uh, Leo, who is the head of the whole Center for Career and Technical Education at Somerville High School. And I've asked each of them to give their own perspective um, about the program and the value that it has to their individual students. In December, the commission establishes an award subcommittee, and this committee seeks out property nominations um, and then reviews the ones that have come in. In January, the committee makes the visits to a wide selection of nominated properties throughout Somerville. And it's wonderful to see how many people in the city have actually invested the time, the money, um, and often quite a bit of research and physical labor into their homes. It is also very encouraging to find out how many neighbors have been pleased and inspired by the work that these owners have done, and in many cases have actually nominated their neighbors' properties um, for this award. The awards uh, committee selects a handful of properties for either a director or a preservation award, and up to six of each. The staff takes photographs of each house and gives them to the CAD instructor and to each of the art teachers. Uh, the students then use these photographs, um, often supplemented by individual site visits, um, to create the original art that you see here tonight um, and that they have individually worked on. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with um, what the difference is between a preservation award and a director award, let me just tell you um, what that means. The preservation awards are given to designated historic houses, and they are usually created by the art students. And a designated property is one that has actually been surveyed by the city of Somerville um, and has gone through a fairly elaborate process to be um, find out about the architectural and historical significance of the property, recommended by the Preservation Commission to the Board of Aldermen for them to vote on and then the mayor to sign. Um, we've had a number of um, properties designated over the years since the commission was established back in 1985. Um, we're up over 350 properties now in the city. Um, and the uh, students that do these awards for the preservation um, awards, they use a different techniques to create, uh, recreate the house. Um, and it depends on what type of art that they're actually taking. Um, that could be a photography, watercolor, or even a ceramics class. And this year, we're actually benefiting from three different types of medium, and that's the advanced architectural drawing, digital photography, and ceramics. So you've seen over here, uh, hopefully, the display of the artwork. Um, and so I encourage you to, to see the variety of ones that are there. Once the artwork is finished in mid-April, the art teachers select the top 10 to 15 pieces from the students' work. And then the commission's award subcommittee um, chooses from these pieces the final drawings that will be given out tonight. And this year, um, we had a good number of choices, so we ended up with a handful of honorable mentions as well. And the second type of award is a director's award. And these are granted for houses that are considered of historic vintage, um, but they haven't actually been designated as historic under the city's ordinance. And for those awards, the CAD program, under Daniel Bendel, um, chooses the students with the most experience, interest, and skill to work on the final CAD drawing to the property owners, because these drawings take a lot of all of those <laughs> features. This year, some of the students have actually worked on their houses collaboratively, so you'll notice that two of the CAD drawings are actually very similar to each other. For field experience, Daniel, the teacher, will take the class to participate, or to visit, excuse me, a prototypical house on Prospect Hill. Um, on site, the students will learn how to take accurate measurements of each house's exterior, and how best to observe and then capture on a drawing the architectural detail of a particular property. And for those of you that are getting a director's award, you got the letter letting you know that the high school students were going to be roaming around your property, so that was why. Um, once the drawings are completed by all the art and CAD students, I will actually take them to Stanhope Framers, 
and, which is a local business, and their professional staff will find mats and frames um, to showcase them tonight, um, each of the 11 pieces. And they do this at a very substantial discount, because otherwise we could never afford the type of work that they do. Um, so if you're ever wanting to have something framed, this is the place to go. <laughs> and they're right uh, located here in Union Square, so you don't even have to go very far. Since no um, city or grant funds are currently available for us to do this project, um, the commission has benefited very significantly from Century Bank. Um, and this year, as they have done for the past 15 years, the bank has very generously contributed um, to all of the funds um, that allows us to properly present the students' uh, artwork as well um, to you as property owners, as well as to the students for their portfolio. Century Bank, if you don't know, is a family-owned bank that has never forgotten its roots in Somerville. The chairman, Marshall Sloan, was born and raised here and has been very generous to the community ever since. So now you can see tonight um, why the ceremony is not the end of the awards program, but simply the culmination of many months of work by many different people. In fact, in a week or so, um, the property photos and the artwork itself will be on display for many people to enjoy. And the exhibit will first be installed um, on the walls outside the Alderman's Chambers at City Hall. And this is where it will be seen by hundreds of people that visit City Hall for a variety of civic meetings over the next, um, over the summer, basically. Um, it's interesting because as staff at City Hall, we often get people commenting to us about how wonderful it is to see the kind of work that both the students as well as homeowners are doing in the city when they see the artwork on there. So it's been a great way to, to publicize not only the program, but the work that you guys have done. Um, and it has inspired some people to do additional work on their own properties, which of course is another part of the uh, mission here. So after this, the mobile exhibit will travel to another venue, uh, likely the cafe here um, in the armory. And if you haven't been in there, it's a wonderful place, not only to view the artwork on the walls, but also to enjoy the excellent food and drinks. Um, and also they have local performers here, speakers and musicians. So it's a great gathering place. We also expect that Century Bank um, will display the artwork as they do every year at their Fellsway branch of the uh, bank. Um, and um, that will probably be in the spring. And this will introduce some of their patrons at the bank to some of the wonderful work that's being done on Somerville properties. And also note that last year's exhibit um, is currently on view right now um, for another week or two at New Cafe, now known as New Kitchen, which is in Union Square on Washington Street. Um, and they have put up the exhibit there, uh, a small part of it. Um, also, be aware that the exhibit tonight and this ceremony is being videotaped um, for cable television. And I want to personally thank um, the cable staff for their annual participation in this. Um, the PowerPoint presentation that follows will also be on the city's website. Um, and in this way, we hope that people um, can find out what type of preservation work is being done in Somerville and can be proud to be members of such an active and hardworking community. So in sum, these are the ways that our particular awards uh, program in Somerville, we think, is both different from and more encompassing from other communities. It integrates community-based teaching and learning with community reinvestment and pride, and it reaches out to lots of people with different backgrounds and different perspectives. So I now um, would like to introduce two of the key people who have helped to make this event possible. And that's the chairman of the commission, which is Dick Bauer, who will raise his hand. Okay. <laughs> He's sitting in the back. <laughs> Dick has actually been chair of the commission for the past 10 years, and he's been swearing that he's going to resign before he got to this point, but this is the final year that he is doing that, resigning as chairman, that is. <laughs> um, and the second person is the chair of the awards committee, which is Abby Friedman who is here in the front row. <laughs> uh, both Dick and Abby have served on the commission for a number of years and have been a tremendous asset as exceptional commissioners um, that we've been very lucky to have. Incidentally, you might want to know that both Dick and his wife, Roberta, who is here tonight as well, um, and Abby and her husband, Dick, who is also here tonight, 
kind of a requirement, I guess, I don't know, <laughs> um, have actually won a director's award um, from the commission uh, many years ago. So they can appreciate firsthand how much work um, and how much patience it takes to actually earn one of these awards, that they've stuck with it. Um, and if you're wondering, this is a key way that we actually recruit new members to the commission. So you're all on our list. <laughs> um, okay. So um, I think that what we'll want to do is now introduce the speakers um, that are going to just share a little bit of background about their perspective from the Somerville High School. And I'd like to start, start with Daniel Bendel. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Brandon, and also thank you to all the members of the Historic Commission. Oh, I thought I heard, the, I thought I heard it coming through already. Is that better? All right. Thanks. Um, so thank you to the Historic Commission for having us tonight. Uh, like Brandon said, this is my personal sixth year, but the program you know, goes further than those six years. They've been doing it for multiple years at the high school with the drafting students um, in my program. Um, I'd also like to thank all the owners and I hope that when you see your drawings tonight I hope you're that you're happy with them because a lot of work did go into them from our students um, I, mostly when I take my time up here I want to just thank them for the hard work that they did uh, it's not a night like tonight it's not a day like today when they go out there we're usually out there in early late February or early March and it happened to be maybe two or three days after one of the nor'easters this year uh, so I think um, a few of their boots have dried out by this point after going out and measuring up all the houses. So a lot of work goes into these. The students learn a lot, but they get a good life experience that all ties back into actually their, it's not coming through? Okay. It all ties back into their own community as well. So sorry if you couldn't hear me, but those are my remarks. So thank you. Daniel is very modest, <laughs> um, and the students who are here tonight to tell you that. <laughs> um, so the next person I'd like to introduce is Leo Simone, Gio Simone. Uh, he is the head of the Career and Technical Education um, Center at the high school, and he's also, I believe, now the interim um, associate headmaster of the high school because as you hopefully know, um, Somerville is rebuilding its high school, a very exciting project that has already started, and he is very actively involved in that. So I think he has an additional new title as well. But he is the one that is actually uh, responsible for the CAD program and a number of other ones at there, which he will tell you about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brennan, for having us, and thank you, homeowners, for allowing our students this uh, great real-life opportunity. Um, I own property here in the Somerville, so uh, I think you'll get your investment back, that's for sure. So, <laughs> um, Talk about art. Our students, we had 25 students and about 10 staff members here Saturday night, and when I walked in, it was um, a fundraiser for the Little Sisters of the Poor, there was about 400 people here, and I'm looking at it and I said, I have no idea how they did it. And this was a makeshift kitchen Saturday night where our students were making, um, dishing desserts and dishing meals, and, and it, was, uh, it was incredible. So, um, Again, thank you for having us, and I want to thank my students for all the work that they put into this project. Uh, I want to thank Deanne Bendel. Um, like Brandon, uh, Brandon said, he's very modest. Um, he does an incredible job with the students in the program and the program. Um, over the last six, I can't believe he's been there six years. Um, over the last six years, that program has tripled in size, and about 98% of the students go on to four-year colleges in engineering and architecture. It's a very, very successful program, so I'd like to thank Dan for that. <laughs> a little bit about... Um, some of the things that happened at the high school, um, Brendan asked me to talk a little bit about Fabville. If you're not familiar with Fabville, um, Google it, look it up on the high school website. What it is is a um, part of our advanced manufacturing program. Over the last two years, we've uh, received uh, about a million dollars in grants. And with that million dollar grant, um, or multiple grants, we were able to refurbish a machine shop that was had equipment from 
1940s. It actually came up from the old building on Cross Street. Um, and now we have the latest in Haas machines. And the other part of that grant enabled us to partner with MIT and to build this um, advanced manufacturing program um, that we open to the public. So we do classes there between 3.30 and 9, um, four nights a week, and it's anything from laser cutting to making tags to um, using a shop bot to some of the artwork that you see over there um, that's part of your homes. So um, it's a pleasure for us to do this, and, and if, like Brandon also said, the high school, you talk about architecture, that project, if you haven't looked it up online, look it up. It's uh, very complex, but it will be, um, one of the most unique high schools in the state of Massachusetts when it's completed. Uh, the only tough part of it is they're doing it while we're in the building. So they're closing off wings, um, different parts of the building. For example, the C wing right now, if you drive by there, you see all the mods out front, but if you can see behind them, the high school's in front of you to the far right is the C wing and they're abating that right now. That will come down the day the students walk out the next day, which is scheduled for June 22nd, it will come down. And they plan on having um, the new pop one part of the building populated in September 2019. So it'll be quite amazing. Um, they're, they're expecting that this whole project will be done two and a half years. So it'll be um, quite the project when it's completed. It'll be um, state-of-the-art school. If you haven't been in the high school, I mean, I was born and brought up in the city, it's time for it to go. So it's, it's fine that they're changing it. So it's a beautiful building. The 1895 building will stay intact. That'll be turned over to the city as uh, phase four of the project, what they're going to do with it, we don't know yet. Um, there's a lot of um, updating that has to be done in that too. So I wanna thank you again for this and um, I look forward to it and I'll be here throughout the evening if you have any questions. Thank you very much. He's not sharing all the other programs that are there, but it's a wonderful school. And one thing you might not already know if you don't have a student that's in the high school is that um, uh, one of its benefits is a comprehensive high school, as we call it, which means that students there are bound not only for colleges and universities, but also to trade schools um, and learn um, how to do a lot of the types of jobs that are really needed out there. And so you can actually go um, and take courses in the trades as well as go in the college preparatory. So it's all in the same campus as we're now calling it and so it's a pretty special that we have that so um, but I do urge you as as you said to look at some of the plans for the new high school it's very exciting it's very chaotic and it's creating all kinds of uh, parking and traffic impacts on, on Highland Avenue but the good news when it's done is it's going to be a pretty amazing place so um, the art teacher could not be here tonight, or any of them as well, um, and needless to say they work long hours during the day. But I do want to point out that this year the ceramics teacher, Mei Chow, um, deserves some special recognition because her students um, have done a lot of um, the tiles here, or her, uh, done all the tiles here at her urging, and they've chosen um, those features of the house that they thought was particularly interesting. So um, as hopefully you've already heard, um, a lot of those tiles are available to you as the property owner, if you'd like, for a s small donation, basically, to um, provide some additional art supplies there. So I hope you'll go over there, take a look, and let us know if you're interested, um, because I think they did some fun things, and it's pretty special to have a tile of your own house, right? So I'd now like to start the part of the program that relates to um, giving out the awards. Um, and the way that we organize this is we do it one property at a time. Um, and I'm going to ask Abby and Dick to come up to um, oversee that. Um, we actually have um, certificates to give out as well to everybody. Um, one certificate will come from the Preservation Commission directly. Uh, and I will... For those of you in the audience that aren't getting one or happen to be watching this on television um, in the future, uh, this certificate um, from the commission says, Mayor Joseph A. Curtitone and the Somerville Historic Preservation Commission a 2018 Community Service Award, um, or it depends on what kind of award, a Director's Award or Preservation Award, um, is for the work that you did on X property. And it's signed by the mayor, myself, and Dick Bauer as the chairman. In addition, um, Senator Jalen, uh, who was
was previously our representative at the State House and has been the senator for a number of years, um, has chosen to give everybody a citation from the State House. Uh, they're very elaborate. <laughs> Uh, and they come in this large folder, and what it says is, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, State Senate, official citation, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends congratulations to, in recognition of receiving a 2018 Preservation Award from the Somerville Historic Preservation for whatever property it is, and be it further known that the Massachusetts Senate extends its best wishes for continued success, that this citation be duly signed by the President of the Senate and attested to and a copy thereof transmitted, transmitted by the Clerk of the Senate. And it's signed by the President of the Senate, the Clerk of the Senate, and of course, Senator Jalen herself. So everyone will be getting one of these. The only unfortunate thing about them is they do not fit in the file cabinet. <laughs> so um, uh, when people, uh, we announce your award, we're hoping that a property owner, uh, as well as a student that did the artwork, will come up and just say a few words about any lessons that you learned um, or anything about your experience that you're willing to share um, with the people that are here. Hopefully the why you did it and why you're glad you did it <laughs> um, and what you might have learned from it if you're a student. So we're going to get started with the director awards. The special thanks, oh, sorry, we'll go back to that last award. Um, I do want to, before, um, uh, before we go on, is just to say that we have some special thanks to give to these people up here, um, because they have been instrumental in enabling this um, ceremony to occur tonight, and these are all by donations that they've given, and so um, I think you can read um, the, who they are, but Mount Vernon Restaurant um, providing a lot of the food back there as well as the service, uh, Red Bones Restaurant, Somerville Theater, uh, and Prospect Hill Beverages um, have provided the food for tonight, and then of course Stanhope Framers and Century Bank that I mentioned earlier, and oh yes, the wine, of course, the wine bow, um, which is based here in Somerville. So um, now we'll get started with the ceremony and the awards. Okay, we're going to get started with 8, uh, 38 Dartmouth Street. Uh, these are all director awards, and just to remind you, the director awards are not designated properties, but they're older houses that had significant work done on the exterior, and very nicely done. So. Before we do this award, I just want to note as um, that one of the real pleasures of being the chair of the commission has been getting to do the awards ceremony now. Um, Brandon mentioned that this is our 23rd year as first vice chair and chair. I think I have had the pleasure of doing this uh, at least half of those years. Uh, and then for the last uh, considerable number of years, Abby, as the vice chair of the commission then, has been doing it with me. Uh, as Brandon noted, we are both stepping down. I'm stepping down as chair, and Abby is moving out of town and leaving the commission. Uh, and I just wanted to thank her for being my partner all of these years. Uh, and we'll really miss you. And I would just um, say that I'll miss the commission and I'll miss Somerville. It's been quite something. We've lived here 35 years. And um, each time we do one of their, our, we do these awards tours when we go out and look at properties every year. And it's a learning experience for me every time, even though I've been on the commission for about 12 years, I still continue to learn from my colleagues on the commission and from always, especially this project where we go and we actually look at houses in Somerville and talk with them, um, talk about them with each other and with the staff. And um, my eyes always are seeing new things and my brain is always learning new things about old houses. So it's been a good experience. And now we're joined by Lacey Astra Connors and Wyatt Connors. Hi. Own 38 Dartmouth Street. And, um, and oh, that's actually, no, let me do it. That's easier, I think. Yeah. Uh, and this is their house. And you get to see the before and after 
uh, and how dramatic it is. So I want to ask the two of you what your experience has been like working on this project. Uh, well, I grew up in this house. It was my mom's house. Um, so it's been a emotional and nice experience um, making it our own, I guess. I don't, I'm terrible at public speaking. Okay. <laughs> so, so what kinds of things did you do? Well, I think the award is just for the painting. That's what we changed. And the fence. Um, I don't think it had been painted since my mom bought it in 1983. Um, so it, we changed it considerably. Um, and we tried to just, um, I guess, keep a kind of Victorian painted lady feel to it. So this is the CAD drawing that Brendan mentioned, uh, and so I want to ask the uh, Steve Mancilla, who did the CAD drawing, to come up if he's here. And you can see the amazing amount of work that went into that. So it looks like he is not here, but he will get a copy of this too, and you will get a copy after it has had a chance to be in a public place for a year for the rest of us to enjoy it first. Um, and this year we also have some wood engravings. Is Jake Dector here? I personally think that that's, these are fascinating drawings. Okay, good. Well, well thank you so much. So the, the next director's award is for 180 Highland Avenue. Um, Paul and Mary Talmo, are you here this evening? Can you come up? Oh, your representative. <laughs> and um, this is a very interesting house for Somerville. We don't have many Tudor style houses in the city. And um, this has an interesting history because I believe it started out as a private, regular family house, and now it is. Um, a business. It's actually always been a dental office. It, it's a, oh, it has always been a dental office. Hmm. Well, you can tell us more about it. So it was originally um, built sometime around the, we're not really sure, sometime around 1926 or 1927. And it was built by Dr. Lewis Card with the intention that he was going to practice dentistry there with his brother. Who they actually ended up having a falling out and didn't practice there together. But it was innovative because it was one of the first multi-chair dental practices in the country. It was That had not really been done before. Usually dental offices were in a dentist's home, usually on the first floor, and it was limited to one or two rooms. So he had this idea to, to dedicate a whole building and have you know multiple chairs in order to be able to offer, you know, a range of services and a range of procedures. So we kept, there was a renovation that we did on the inside of the building three years ago, and then over the past two years we've renovated the outside and repainted and re-landscaped. But um, in, in the in interior we kept the same layout because it really works. The rooms, when dental offices are converted from residential homes, it's a challenge because rooms are different sizes and shapes and in a dental practice, you want to have uniform sizes so that it has the right layout to work in. Um, so it's a, it's a beautiful building, and it really deserved to be restored to the condition that it's in now. And we're really lucky to be there. And the patients, they like the, they like the atmosphere. Every room, every treatment room has a nice big window, so there's a lot of light. And it's just a very comfortable feel for a dental office. I have to add on to this one. Um, th they did not nominate themselves for this award. I have to tell you, a number of people nominated you for this award, because this is one of the more prominent houses on Highland Avenue. I'm sure everybody here that has ever traveled on Highland has noticed this and thought what a wonderful uh, property it is. And this has been a labor of love for, obviously, a number of years. Um, and so we're just thrilled that both the interior and the exterior, I was just in the interior for the first time ever, I have to confess, 
uh, two days ago, uh, and the interior is worth going in. Even if you don't need your, dent your uh, teeth pulled, I would go in. <laughs> She's also a great dentist, but... <laughs> um, but <laughs> yes, um, but this is actually also a family I want to note that has been in the city for several generations and so she's carrying on uh, the dental work um, that her father did um, and then actually uh, her aunt um, is here tonight, uh, Evelyn Battinelli, uh, who heads up the Somerville Museum and, uh, uh, and so um, I also want to give a round of applause. <laughs> Uh, Evelyn and then I go back a long time, and she helped me establish these awards program many, many years ago. So it's my great pleasure to give all of your family this award from both the state as well as from the city. Um, and again, I do encourage you, she, they let you go in. There's some wonderful artwork on the walls. There's a mural. It, it, it's like going back into another century in, inside, although all the equipment is very updated and modernized if you're actually having work done. So, <laughs> so again, thank you so much, Katie, for doing the work. And um, the artwork for this piece is a CAD drawing by Nicholas Braz Braz Dulles. Are you here? Oh, great. Glad you could come. Thank you. I love the sense of design with this piece. It's like, it has this great like rhythm to it. So come and tell, tell us about your work on this. Um. I really enjoy drawing this house because it has a nice um, vintage feel to it, like she said, and it has the nice uh, 1928 feel to it. And um, I like the bricks and the stone and the colors to it and the general like vibe around it. So it was very enjoyable to draw. And um, do you have plans to go on? Or what year in school are you? Um, junior. Um, I'm a junior this year. Do you have plans to go into architectural drawing? Yeah, after high school, I plan on going to a four year college for either civil engineering or architecture. So I enjoy this. Right. Um, I also wanted to let everybody know, if you're wondering why the artwork is staying over there and not going into your hands, um, because one of the features of this program is in order to have the mobile exhibit, we need to have the artwork. So the way this works is that um, the students will get their, um, for their portfolio, if they're graduating particularly is important, uh, the frame drawing tonight. The rest of you, the homeowners, who uh, instant gratification you learned a long time ago is not acceptable, um, you're going to need to wait a year <laughs> for you to actually get your award drawing um, because it's going to travel around the city, as I mentioned earlier. So um, you'll get the citations and the certificates tonight, but not the actual award drawing. We will notify you next year when it's ready, um, and I hope your um, patience will be worthwhile. So, and, uh, do, we know who, do we know who did the laser print, this print? Um, some of the, um, the wood prints came in without student names on them. Um, is the artist who did this print here tonight? No. So this is one of our Fabville um, three-dimensional laser prints that uh, is really nice looking. I think it looks really great. Um, so, and we did oh, is there any more in this? That's it? Okay. Oh, there we go. So uh, we also this year had um, tiles, ceramic tiles, done by some of the art students. And uh, again, we don't know all of the names. Is Jonathan Luisant here tonight? Or any of the artists who did this collection of tiles? No. So the tiles are displayed over on the table. And um, it's really interesting to see a different medium. Uh, it's kind of fascinating. So uh, those are the tiles. Before we do uh, 53 Josephine Avenue, I just want to note that the mayor has come in. 
and uh, Joe Curtitoni has been a strong supporter, not only of the Preservation Awards program, but of historic preservation in Somerville, and we really appreciate his support. Thank you, Joe. You want to come say a few words? Well, thank you. I apologize um, for being late, but I did show up out of fear. Brandon would not leave me alone if I didn't show up. But no, I, I wanted to come here. I, I had to give a labor update at the city, so I took a little time. But I really wanted to come by because I, 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 I have such an admiration for the folks who have led the charge in historic preservation and recognition in this city for years. Uh, the Isabel Cheneys and the likes and many others who have recognized that embracing our historical um, fabric and our culture and our, embracing history in general is critical to our identity. And there's some people here tonight, you know them real well, and, Standing next to me, we've championed that. Um, um, sad that Abby's going to be, I know, physically leaving the city, not emotionally. I was saying that to Dick, and we're going to miss you. Only 15 Only 15 minutes away, uh, and we're going to miss you. And thank you so much for what you've done for the entire community and push people like myself to think of a bolder agenda for historic preservation. And, uh, and Dick Bauer, who uh, uh, for years has served this commission in the community, um, uh, has done so much uh, work and led the, helped lead the charge along with Abby and many others to adopt the Community Preservation Act uh, here in Somerville. So I want to thank them both. Uh, please give me, join me and give them a round of applause. And I joke, but uh, Brandon Wilson has been a true champion and she has worked for five administrations, five administrations uh, in the city of Somerville. And I will tell you, because I see it every day, uh, I wonder why, if she's human, because she is there day in, day out, long hours, uh, beyond her job description, with a passion and a commitment to this community that, that is unmatched. And uh, I, I just want to thank her again for what she has done, uh, you know, her engagement with the community, her, the expansion of, of our reach for how we think about historic preservation, pushing new bold policy and legislation. Uh, and just working with homeowners and businesses across the city and reminding us of why this is so important. Brendan, thank you very much for what you've done for the city as well. Uh, and, you know, you know, from the events that we hold to recognize, you know, celebrate our history, 175 years as a city last year, to the raising of the Grand Union flag, to recognizing important historical events like the Rite of Power Review and many other things in some of the orchards, these events where we recognize you as homeowners and individuals who make an investment in your property, but in this community values. Uh, I think we want to thank you very much. This is part of our identity, part of who we are. Um, and I want to thank all the students who, again, year in, year out, and, and everybody at the CTE program who you know, did remarkable work. This is one of our favorite events. Uh, it's great to be here. I'll be to support you. But again, I want to thank you for supporting the advancement of historic preservation here in the city of Somerville. Thanks. Sounds like it's time for me to retire. <laughs> um, so thank you so much, Mayor, for coming. He has a really busy schedule, but as he's often told me, this is one of his favorite um, ceremonies of the year. So thank you again for taking time out of your incredibly busy family and work life. So um, Okay, so uh, we're now getting it organized so that the citations and the <laughs> certificates, as well as the drawing for the students, will be given to them. So please don't leave students before you get your drawing. Um, and citations and such, and um, we'll continue now on with 53 Josephine, are we? So I want to invite up, uh, the, yeah. okay, Randall Conrad and Christine Dahl. I, um, I'm actually going to do a little um, ad-libbing here as well. Um, unfortunately, um, Conrad Dahl um, has actually uh, passed away this winter, which is a very sad story because he and his wife, Christine, um, have actually had to go through a very harrowing experience in this house. Um, there was a fire on this, um, at this house um, a couple of years ago in, in 2016, and make a very long saga short on their behalf, um, they w were going to fix it up and restore it back um, to its original. Again, this is not a designated property. 
But to make it a long story short, it turns out that the house was in such terrible shape by the time the insurance money came through, and if anybody's been through this uh, experience, you probably have, uh, know what this is all about. By the time the insurance money came through, there was, um, they had to, the house was in such terrible condition from the weather that it happened that they actually ended up having to rebuild the whole house, and that was a very difficult experience for them. So um, they actually don't, um, he's passed away, she's not living in their house, her son is, and unfortunately he wasn't able to come tonight either. Um, but it, it is a, um, a remarkable structure that how they really brought it back after um, it had lost a lot of its original features, including its front porches on the lower and upper level. So you can see um, what it now looks like. Um, and they did a, a wonderful job working with the commission directly on this one um, because it was a rebuilding process that they had to go through. And so it was um, a difficult one for them, but it, was, it turned out really nicely. And so this was nominated by a lot of the neighbors on the street, including myself. <laughs> this is the CAD drawing. Uh, is Larry uh, Mariano here? I personally have to stop sort of for each one of these CAD drawings because I'm just in awe uh, about what they have done. And here's a wood engraving by Roy Bitt Dulkes. We are going to go on now to the next director's award, which is 88 Liberty Avenue, number one. Maxine, Maxim Shinen and Anutuma Mohan. And 88 Liberty Avenue number two, Philippa Mapa and David Ruddy. Ruddy, are you here tonight? Yes, because I met you earlier. <laughs> so, um, see, we can see the before and after and would you like to tell us about your experiences with this house? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Project manager. No, he's afraid of talking because he won't stop. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure if you can tell from the picture, but we fell in love with this house when we moved to Somerville about over 14 years ago. And um, it wasn't necessarily the outside of the house that drew our attention. It was mostly the location, because we were right in Davis Square, and then also the interior. But also, as we lived in it, we noticed like the beautiful slate roof that we had. And that was actually what we focused on first, knowing that eventually we would have to address the lovely brown and yellow exterior. So finally, um, it's a two-family, which had been condoized. And Sometimes you get along with your neighbors and sometimes it's a little bit more difficult. So we finally got to a place with our neighbors, Anutama and Maxime, where we said, let's attack the outside of the house. And this is what we ended up with. And um, we were pretty happy with how it turned out. So thank you for recognizing, recognizing us. We have no idea how we got nominated or anything, but we got this letter in the mail and we're like, wow, this is great. So. Um. Uh, yeah, you never know what I'm going to say. So uh, when we first got this letter, the story, I tell this a lot to people now. When I saw the letter from the Historical Society, I was terrified initially. Because my sister is, uh, lives in Boxford, and she lives in a historical home, and they're very, very regimented about what they can do. But when I saw it, I thought, I didn't even realize we were a historical home. And we weren't. And the first line was congratulations, and that was excellent. For us, it was a, it was a great moment, and we're very proud of it. So thank you, all of you guys, for the work to put into this. And um, you see the artwork there? This is um, Lucas uh, Cavanaugh here? No? Well, here's the CAD drawing. And uh, I love the shapes on this one very much and the contrast between the the little the step shapes and then the, the roof. It's really wonderful. And is there, is, he's not here, I don't think, right? Okay. And is there um, another piece of artwork here? And this is the wood engraving uh, by Marcos Gonzalez. Is he here? No? 
So you can see these wood engravings over on the table if you haven't seen them yet. And then these are the ceramic tiles, which are totally wonderful and fabulous. And um, are any of the students who did these, is Hannah O'Sullivan here? Or any of the other two artists? These are just great. Thank you. Thank you. Again, we encourage um, those of you that are just slipping away right now to look at the tiles and see if you're interested in um, making a donation for any of them for your house, since um, the students have been willing to do the work and then um, give it up at the end. So, so please take a look at the table. Um, this is the other part of that award, right? There's two people in there. Uh, I asked both of them. I looked at the oh, I see. Okay. okay. So we have a separate award for them. Um, I will let you know that because you're a two-family house that's been condominiumized, and we didn't actually know that there were two separate owners that had both done work on the houses, sometimes it's um, one person that had, that you're going to have to share your award, <laughs> your frame drawing, and every six months you can change or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there. That's right. The common hallway. Perfect. So great. And our last director's award is 50 Madison Street. Are the owners Lilo Zolne and Matthias Makabowski here? Hi. Thank you, guys. And thank you all who've been sitting here so patiently. I know it's been hard. But we're glad that you're here and we appreciate it. So come on up and tell us about your house. Sure. So I used to live on this uh, street uh, starting in 2000. Drove by this house every day, the one on the left. And I guess the one on the right too. But I never noticed it until about 2004 when a for sale sign started going up. And um, didn't really pay that much attention to it uh, after that, but the for sale sign kept being up for months and months and months, and eventually figured we should probably check this out. So I went there with my girlfriend at the time, now wife, and uh, we checked out the place. Half the rooms we weren't able to see. The house was actually used as a rooming house at the time. So we saw about half the house. The stuff that we did see uh, didn't look all that promising, and uh, when we walked down the front stairs there on that porch that was just about to fall down. Uh, my, my wife later told me, we walked out the house and she said, well, this place is in such bad shape, there's no way he's going to be interested in this one. <laughs> and as we walked down the stairs, I turned to her and said, so what do you think? <laughs> and as you can see, the, the rest is history. So in some case, you know, in some ways, maybe we should be thankful for the vinyl cladding. It... Uh, help preserve the house to some degree. And, uh, you know, we, we started renovating on the inside, um, you know, fixing up all the old plaster walls, taking off some of the uh, faux uh, brick work, you know, the faux brick wood paneling, um, you know, fixing up some of the, uh, the old casings, um, you know, swapping out, you know, some, some have been replaced with the, you know, cheap, cheap casings from Home Depot and, you know, we Went to Anderson McQuaid, got the you know original casings, uh, sourced them, and put them back in place. And then uh, when we're done the inside, we still kept coming home to the house on the left, and uh, that didn't feel so good. So we worked on the outside as well, ripped out the vinyl siding, and that's the end result right there. So uh, we didn't do this to uh, to get an award. We just did it because it felt like the right thing to do. We knew that underneath all that vinyl siding, there was a beautiful house, and uh, Eventually, we found it. Did you want to add anything? I just wanted to say that um, the only thing that passed inspection for the housing inspection was the vinyl sliding, <laughs> which we knew we were going to remove. <laughs> and um, Matthias replaced um, all those windows himself. Yeah, so he did a lot of the, he did everything that um, he was prevented to by himself. I want to ask you guys, are you living with all of this construction going on all around you? Every once in a while. Every once in a while? What was it like? Well, they did most of it a very long time ago, but, but um, like a few 
few years ago, he did a lot of construction in the basement. And he, like, ripped up walls and stuff like that. Is it better now? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> How about you? Mm. What was it like while all of the construction was going on? Um. Was it hard to live through? Or was it really easy? Really easy. Really easy, okay. <laughs> good news for you guys. Uh, I have to ask Matthias, what do you do for a living? Do you have anything to do with being a contractor? Nope, I sit at a computer all day. That's what I so thought. I, I, don't, I actually knew the answer to that question, I have to confess, because Lilo actually nominated him for this, and she was so excited about finally getting this nomination in because she's wanted to do it for some time, and I can see why, because you obviously deserve some public recognition for what you've done. It's amazing. And you just said all those things that preservationists love to hear, which is not going and getting stock items off a of Home Depot in order to do the restoration work and such, and right. taking a long time to do it. But um, you don't have to do it yourself, but it just goes to show you that you don't have to hire a very expensive architect, sorry architects that are out there in the audience, um, <laughs> or contractor to do the work. You can do it piece by piece yourself. And so it's, it's an inspiring example for us and everyone here. Great. Thank you. So is... Um, Amber Hussein here. Oh, hey. This is a wonderful drawing. Thank you. Tell us what it was like working on it. Um, I really enjoyed working at, the, at this house. You know, it was kind of challenging at the same time. I get to learn a lot of things because, you know, it was up up high hill, so. It was it was kind of hard to you know get all these high measurements, but I I got I did my best, and then you know that's how I come up. Were you cursing all the architectural features that he just restored? <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, I didn't. That's good to hear. And what will you be doing um, in the future? Do you have any sense? Uh, I'm trying to go for civil engineering, but you never know what's going to happen in the future. Oh, I think you're well on your way to it. Dude. Great job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is Owen Chu here, who did the wood grain? We have tiles too. Are any of the tile artists here? Kristen Sanchez or anybody else who worked on these? Yeah, I don't, I don't think any of the, the art uh, students are here tonight. They're all busy at home, I'm told, doing their homework. <laughs> So now we move on to the um, preservation awards, and these awards are for houses that are designated um, in local historic districts. And so some of this work follows um, the historic. So this work follows the historic preservation uh, design guidelines. And the first um, property we're going to look at is 56 Bow Street. And uh, the is Lindsay and Eric New here? Tell us about your project. Well, we did just about everything on the inside and the outside, so we did not do it by ourselves. We had a great design build team that we worked with who helped us figure out both on the inside and the outside the um, architecturally appropriate finishes and clapboards and all that stuff how wide the corner boards should be and really guided us through the whole process along with the commission and the staff. And uh, as the one that went to most of the commission meetings in our behalf over two years, I just wanted to thank Dick and Abby um, because uh, the staff can prepare you to go to these meetings and they tend to make it seem like it's going to be scary, but then the meetings are actually you know, quite good, largely due to your, your chairmanship. And then Abby's always quick with the gratitude and a kind word at the end and making sure that you feel appreciated as a homeowner, which is an important piece of it. Um, I think that... 
people, when they think of historic preservation commissions, they think, oh, you know, this, these people are going to, like, make us do things we can't, we don't want to do or are too expensive. They're going to make us do things that, like, aren't to our taste and stuff like that. But I really um, kind of pride myself on trying to have a very cooperative relationship and making sure the commission has a cooperative relationship with the homeowners and that we're really there to help you and not to make life difficult for you, but really to give you assistance, assistance, maybe give you some ideas that you hadn't thought about, some resources, and try to make your project the very best that it can be. So, and I think your house has really come a long way. It looks really nice. Really like yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And. Is uh, Jorge Montoya here? <laughs> These great drawings. They're just really wonderful. Tell, it, tell us about what it was like to do. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm really glad about it, and I'm really nervous. <laughs> so I don't have words to explain uh, these experience because it is it was my first house drawing in a long time and I'm a man with a little words and thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> what? Do you do other artwork, other kinds of artwork or have you done other kinds of artwork? And has this made you think of something that you might want to do in the future? Yeah, and after high school, I went to be an architect. So because I love, I love to draw. So it sounds like we need to get you into Daniel's program so that you can learn. Are you doing the CAD program as well, in addition to art? Yeah, I think this is very nice, right? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, because obviously you know you've got some art talent as well as architectural interest. So you should put the two together, and you'll be all set. <laughs> so thank you so much. This is wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And um, this is a wood engraving at 56 Bow Street. Is the artist here for this? These wood engravings, they just seem, they feel to me like they're sepia photographs and that they have a little dimensionality to them. They're very, very interesting. Well, just so you know, the process by which this goes through is, um, as Leo um, explained, this is pretty sophisticated equipment that the city has benefited from and you all can enjoy as well at the Fabville. But what we do is we give the students a, a drawing and then they use that and use this laser cut um, equipment in order to come up with these. Um, and they're actually learning process. It's not quite that easy. Um, and we actually gave the one photograph that had some clouds in the sky and when the laser um, cut drawing came back, it looked like there was fire coming out of the roof. <laughs> so we had to go back and suggest that this was not going to work and actually Photoshop the photo. So it turns out that there's a lot more to each of these um, drawings, these woodcut uh, drawings, than, than we thought initially. So, um, But they, as you said, they, they do create a whole different effect and um, they bring out some features that you might not otherwise have noticed. Um, uh, I know that you're planning to do some landscaping, so <laughs> I'm sure this will be a lot more uh, enhanced when you do that. Like yeah. <laughs> All things in good time. We totally appreciate that. Um, this is also actually next door to the Bow Street Police Station, the yeah, former yeah, police station, so that's going to be an award tonight as well. So um, you'll see in the original the photo that the, the um, student actually chose Jorge to actually uh, put that in as well, which is pretty fun. So our next preservation award is 88 College Avenue. Uh, our Melissa and Christopher Frost here. Come on up. Thank you. Thank you. Tell us what this has been like working on for you. <laughs> he was going to do it. He was so excited to do it. <laughs> uh, it's been uh, a lot of work. We've been here for 15 years, and we know the commission very well. <laughs> They're like old friends. <laughs> Dick, Dick, go a little further, and I shall see why he's saying that. 
First, uh, we came in for the fence, then we came in for our carriage house, and then we came in for a third floor renovation. There's the carriage house. Um, so, and yeah, then, we actually dug this out of an award, uh, power, uh, PowerPoint that we did in right. 2005, I want you to know. Um, oh, that's right. that's this is when ours. you came in. That's not, that's not yours? No. We'll take it, though. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. Very similar. Well, it th was in 2005 that you got the award, though, right? That's okay, right. so this yeah. is maybe. We, we actually had to really dig. But anyway, so they won an award. That's why he's saying he knows us well, is because they got an award for doing the carriage house um, and did an amazing job on that and have been working ever since and on um, now the house. So yeah, continue. And, you know, it seems done, but I'm sure in a couple of years we'll have to do something else. Um, I'll just add that it's um, a labor of love, and we love Somerville. We love the house. It has good, you know, roots to it, and it was really nice to take off the vinyl siding and see what was underneath it, and, um, and pleasantly, there were fabulous details, and we were able to just kind of keep those and, and preserve them, so we're really happy about that. Can you comment on how long it actually took you to do the work? Um, are you uh, ready to, to, yeah, uh, to uh, think about that? <laughs> yeah, the exterior was about a year. Only a year, really? Oh, Maybe a little It's amazing more. the amount yeah. of work that you got done. Then. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is right on College Avenue as you're going out of Davis Square, so I'm sure people have noticed this house. It's just gorgeous, so thank you so much. It really enhances the streetscape, and it's a huge property and a big undertaking, so we understand that. drawing was done by Helen Garcia Vasquez. Are you here? Okay. Hi. Thank you. That's a really lovely drawing. Thank you. What did you like best about working on that? Um, I think uh, work with shadows and light is the best part because sometimes it can be very difficult, but yeah, I really enjoyed um, the process. Can you tell us what grade you're in and how long you've been doing art? Because obviously this isn't something you just picked up. <laughs> well, actually I'm a junior. And uh, I've been doing art like um, since when I was... Ten years old? Yeah, okay, it shows. <laughs> yeah, it's just a really amazing work. And so thank you so much for capturing so much of that detail, which, you know, is, many people would have sort of been um, uh, intimidated by, I think. And so you really brought it all out and, and captured it all. So just great job. Thank you so much. I have a question. So um, do you have plans for after high school? Um, I really want to study graphic design. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> and a woodcut. Uh, the next preservation award we have is 140 Morrison Avenue. And are um, Kate, uh, Katya and Brian Green here tonight? Mm, no. Um, so uh, I think that they did restoration on, I think it was around the roofs, roof and the windows and the doors, yes. Yeah, the front end, the front entry, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And can we see the next picture? That's very nice. Sometimes little projects can really make a big difference too. We just had a really huge, huge project. And then sometimes little projects also can be very important. Smaller projects. And uh, let's take a look at... Uh, artwork here. So is Iman uh, a Ab Abraham here? Abram here? 
Okay. Uh, in fairness, that um, picture up there doesn't really <laughs> do justice to the artwork that he did. I'm just going to put it up here. Um, unfortunately, the way that when it was scanned in, it just it doesn't show the colors and the windows and such. It really is not a, a, a blank slate there. So I just want you to... <laughs> I don't know if you can see it from here. Okay. <laughs> And you can actually see it on the exhibit well over there, but I just don't want anybody to think that. <laughs> and this is the um, wood engraving. That looks like it's a, it's a new picture, but it looks like it's in there since the 19th century. <laughs> um, is the artist here for the wood engraving? No. I don't know how many of you recognize this building on Mystic Avenue. It was the Mystic Pumping Station, uh, and uh, it's owned by the Somerville Housing Authority. Joe Macaluso is the executive director, and this is a project that's been underway for years and years and years. It was the old pumping station at Mystic, and eventually it became a garage for state DPW trucks before the Housing Authority turned it over, uh, did a complete restoration and turning it into uh, housing for, um, anybody know the number of units? I think it might be 20. I think they do when they come up. Okay, okay, 25. So come on up, folks from the Housing Authority. Okay. Uh. Is Evelyn still here? Did she Yes, leave? Evelyn is here. Evelyn, please come up as well. Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to talk about it? Uh, yeah, Paul Mackey from the Housing Authority. Um, you're right, Dick. It, it was years in the planning, uh, a lot of lessons learned. Um, all of you were more familiar with this than I was, but we, uh, we experienced just about every impediment you could experience um, from the basement and the structures that existed underneath this entire building that used to support the big steam engines. Um, so it was, uh, here was Frank Valdez, who was the lead architect from DeMella Schaefer. Um, we had a whole bunch, we had a whole team. And I've always said this project, this, this really embodies the this, this sense of teamwork. We would have never been able to do it without the city, without the CPA, with the, 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 the support of the Historic Preservation Commission, everybody, um, and, and the money that it costs, which was a surprise to me, we're normally doing this construction, but renovation of this scale with, his, with, with these kind of challenges really challenged the budget. Uh, the mayor was um, incredibly supportive, and we found ways to cobble money together through the city, through the state, um, through extra tax credits, and um, it is an absolute beautiful building. Uh, we're proud that, that as a team we got this thing done uh, within 12 months when we started construction, which was a, ma a massive goal. Yeah, yeah, and goal if goal. you can comment a little bit on when you started, because just so you know, um, the Preservation Commission, one of the roles that we played in this whole thing was actually helping them to get funding um, from the state, the Mass Historical mm -hmm. Commission and such. I think we wrote four, if not six, letters. <laughs> Every year it seemed like we had to resubmit again to yeah. tell them why they really needed to give you yeah. folks money, and you always needed more money because it was such a huge undertaking. Yeah. Um, obviously, and then the, the CPA, the Community Preservation Act, was instrumental here. I think the mayor mentioned it before, but I hope you all know that what an invaluable um, tool and resource the CPA is to the city in actually working on historic buildings, um, as well as open space and, and affordable housing. Um, but that made a huge difference at the end in sort of pulling it all together. Um, and the reason why there is this many people here, although there could be another 10 up here, <laughs> yeah, right. and I know that because not only did they get nominated and win this award from the City um, Preservation Commission, but we also nominated them to the state, the Mass Historical Commission, um, and for whatever reason I can't explain, they did not actually receive that award. I think you absolutely deserved it, but I guess competition, as they say, was very stiff. Um, it also was nominated to HUD, the Housing and Urban Development, which is a federal agency, for the affordable housing piece there as well. 
and Evelyn is here today. Um, Evelyn uh, might say a few words. She and I worked together on these nomination forms and applications, which was also more work than we anticipated. True. True. The award, uh, submitting the awards was a lot of work, but um, I actually more interested in talking about the funding was really hard to put together. Um, uh, there were because it took so long to get some of the awards, the price kept going up, and um, there were huge gaps in funding that, um, fortunately, the city um, housing programs, uh, uh, Office of Strategic Planning was able to come through with quite a bit of money, and the CPA, so it, it came together. And the tax credit money, I think, from the, tax the state, credit, yeah. state Massachusetts. Right, uh, that's what took, that was actually what took so long to, to get. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, and this is actually um, a CAD drawn that they're getting, um, even though it's a historic designated property, and that's just because it was a miscategorization of the, the property, not because... Um, but as it turns out, I think that actually was helpful because this is a very elaborate building, um, and so the award uh, was done on here. Can you imagine counting all those bricks? <laughs> when I tell, these, tell you that these students go out and measure these buildings, and they're really accurate to the last detail, that's the kind of stuff that they, they end up having to do. So, um, And Frank, do you want to say something? As the architect, one of several architects on this team, I know, but he's actually a local architect, is also on the city's design committee, um, as well as very much involved in other things in the city as well. But I know this is a real labor of love for you. Um, so maybe you want to say something. No, it is. I mean, uh, I, mean I think Paul said many of the things. I mean, this was an endeavor of love uh, amongst all of us. Um, if you haven't had an opportunity to see it, I would suggest that you go and see it because there's so many details. It was not just removing vinyl <laughs> from outside. Um, it, it was really an intricate uh, restoration of a historical building. Um, and from the windows to the restoration of the doors, which are all wood replicas of the original. And even the idea of finding what the, the best quality for the roof was and you know the lintels, it, 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 the details of the entire building when you get close to it, um, it give you a different perception that the pictures don't. So if you ever have an opportunity, from what I heard today as well, the best time to look at it is at night. <laughs> so if you ever get an opportunity to, uh, see it at night as well. But uh, I'm very proud of this project, not only because I live in Somerville, but because it also is 25 units of affordable housing for seniors. Mm -hmm. And it is also maintaining also a historical building that we all love. So. It's a multitude of layers. Yeah. And also, you might comment on, on the people that are living there. there are many of them are former summer or summer old residents that have been through a lottery have gotten into the building. Is that right? Oh. Yes. Yeah. 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 All of the residents, uh, I think with the exception of one, were for Somerville. Mm -hmm. uh, many of them, um, uh, I won't comment on that. I shouldn't say their, their backgrounds. Mm -hmm. But they were very much in need of affordable housing. They were not surviving where they were. Mm -hmm. uh, they were they were needing to leave the city and this was the right opportunity. We could do this all day long, right? There's always a need. Uh, but for, for those 25 lucky people, they are the happiest uh, residents we have. Yeah. And, and I can confirm that since I know two of the residents there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, also, Frank, do you want to talk a little bit about what it was before and what you had to encounter? Because what isn't portrayed here, unfortunately, is the, um, uh, what do I want to call it, the artwork that was done by, again, a, a local artist as well, Hillary Scott, as um, very well known for those of you that know about Somerville Open Studios, SOS, um, and they just did the several open studios weekend and those hands that you see that are out there bright green lime green and then they have um, brochures in them and such to tell you all the sites to go to and such Hillary Scott is one of the people that started the SOS um, Ron you can tell me was it 15 years ago I've forgotten exactly 20th year. 20th year okay I knew it was a significant so he started that and he um, was commissioned by you folks? I don't actually know no, who commissioned him. Yeah. No, uh, but, but, okay, by Paul, uh, by the Housing Authority, to do something that, that showed what this building was before. Because again, this is a conversion um, of a, a repurposing of a totally different building, which Frank will talk about. And you might mention how he did that in terms of the exhibit that he... Sure. I mean, the key thing to think about is that this is a water pump station. So this is one of the original buildings that used to pump water into the city of Boston. Um, 
And ironically, when we started renovating the project, we uh, had huge problems because yeah. we found water. <laughs> and we were very um, confused as to where the water was coming from. And we looked at it from many levels and many, uh, we did geotechnical and somebody said to me, well, Frank, this was a water pump station. It was meant to hold water. So where's the pump, right? And well, so <laughs> there literally is, what we found is that there literally is a river running under it. Mm -hmm. So um, It's very the, close to the Mystic River. Right? It is, yeah. and, there's, and there's water running under it. Which is and, on the Mystic River Valley the Parkway. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it was um, originally a, a water pump station, which is a... A, a single story building, which what you don't see as well is that we convert into two stories. So we added an additional floor so we can actually get the additional unit. So what you're seeing there is an illusion really of what the historic, what we needed to do for historical that we maintain the idea of this one and a half story building that was the pump station. But inside, when you walk in there, you see that it's actually two stories and there's two floors in there for the inhabitants so we can actually have 25 units. It, it was a challenge. Um, all of these projects are a challenge. Uh, unforeseen conditions is the, you know, the devil in all of these things. You know, we encounter them all the time. Um, <clears throat> but, so it went from a water pump station, it became a historic building, we designated it as a historic building, and now it is uh, designated as a uh, residential building, mm -hmm. and it is a historic building now uh, with a state registry. And a lot of those internal workings of the water uh, pumping station are now ensconced in this uh, glass uh, capsule, almost, I want to say. So um, you have to see it to, to believe it. But basically, um, Hillary Scott has incorporated all those types of features within this capsule. That's sort of like when you go to a museum and you see something. Well, he's got that in there. And it, I think it might be actually displayed outside. Um, if you actually do want to go in the building, um, there is a movement afoot by myself. Um, we're doing the historic bike ride that we do every year that I was going to mention tonight in the middle of June. And this is one of the stops that we plan to do there. And we're hoping that we will be able to go inside with the cyclists that are there. So if you're a cyclist, um, come join us, and you'll be able to go inside and, and see what it's like. But it's, um, we also have a lot more pictures that we might put up on the website <laughs> uh, so that you can see um, the, the type of challenges that you face, because it, it was a pretty amazing project. And the fact that you got it done in 12 months once you finally got started is, is pretty amazing. Just the last thing that I would say, that it's uh, not 1923. It's actually 18. 61, 64, 61, 64, yeah. where the building was originally done, yeah, yeah, uh, right. and it's and it starts. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I just want I just want to say this is such a great example of um, preservation, historic preservation, and affordable housing working together. And um, one of the reasons I got on the commission was that I believed that. The two don't need to be in conflict with each other. They can work together. And that people who cannot afford a great big beautiful historic mansion should not be um, left out of the historic experience that we have in Somerville. It really belongs to everyone, and everyone should have access to it, no matter what their income. So, um, And I did actually meet uh, one of the residents from this building just about a month ago, and his words were, I said, what is it, what's it like to live there? And he said, we're all thrilled. That's what he said. So thank you so much for all your work and your persistence. Thank you. Thank you. You're Great work. Is Cairo Rodriguez here? Looks like it must have taken you almost as long to draw it as it took them to do the work on the building. Um, so, like, my favorite parts of... So, like, my favorite part of um, doing this is, um, like, making the roof and, like, all, like, the windows and how it was shaped. And now that I think about it, like, I practice outside, like, right at Doughboy, and I really never noticed it. But every time I, like, leave and like drive by it, I notice it a lot more. 
So would you say that you have maybe a closer eye to looking at all, all the buildings now and, and the details on them? <laughs> Great. That's, that's what, what year are you in school? Um, I'm a junior. So after next year as a senior, do you know what your plans are? Um, I'm going to try to attend a four-year college and major in architect or mechanical engineering. Sounds great. I think you'll have a great career ahead of you. benefited from a lot of uh, tiles as well. So I hope you folks over there will go over there and look at your tiles <laughs> and consider that this is students have done. It was funny, this one, I think, um, property inspired the most interest um, in, in kids because in, it was, um, and they picked out different features as well that they wanted to focus on. So it's just like any old building, you never know what people are going to really see as important to them. Um. The, uh, the next preservation award, and uh, is 48 Vinyl Street. This is right in my neighborhood. <laughs> and um, Maria Martins. Actually, my, Maria Martins is my mother. Your mother. And um, she recently passed away in October. So um, she would have been very, very proud of this. My Cora, Anita. There's five of us. Um, we actually um, grew up right around the corner on Summit Ave in Somerville. Um, Paul, my brother, he basically should get all the credit. He's the one that basically was in charge of getting it all done and all renovated and so forth and preserved as much as we could inside as well as outside. Um, my mom was after us about a year and a half ago that she really wanted to get this one done. So she was able to pick the colors and she was able to drive by and take a look at the finished um, home. So, and um, so anyhow, do you want to add anything, Anita? Um, growing up around the corner, I used to walk by this house every day. And before my father bought it, it was really creepy and abandoned <laughs> and neglected. And I used to run by or across the street. And one day I saw my father in the yard. I'm like, what are you doing? you got to get out. <laughs> and he ended up buying it. And he, he, he did an amazing job. And then many years later, it got restored again. So it's come a long way from the original. How long have you folks lived in the city? We were, we went through. We grew up. Schools, yeah, yeah we grew there. up. My parents' house is still, still there. Still there. On Summit Ave, yeah. We went to Southern Junior High School, Coming School, school. and Somerville High. Um, we all graduated. There's five of us. Okay. Yeah. okay, wow. So um, we've been there a while. I'm sorry a lot of those buildings are no longer around, but I know. <laughs> yes, I know. Thank you. I but know. this one now that you've preserved it, so it will last. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I'm sorry that you're, um, it's your brother, it's Paul, is your Paul. brother? Paul, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he said that he wasn't going to be able to come tonight after all, but, but uh, I may have to fess up for him that he owns another house that I had to deliver things to uh, right in the neighborhood, right? That, right. Well, and and, and yeah. he's restored that one as well, yes. so yeah. now we have another nomination coming, so yeah. it's done a okay. wonderful job, again, in Prospect Hill as well. And um, it's wonderful to have a family like yours be here so long and, and take care of houses so nicely. It's really a pleasure. Thank you. So, thank you so thank much. You. Is uh, Rachel uh, Zanaboni here? Uh, this is a lovely drawing of the house. And this is the wood engraving. Some of you may remember when it basically stopped at the end of the top story. It just had a flat roof on it. It got restored some years ago, uh, which included uh, restoration, recreation of the roof, the turrets, the chimneys. Um, but even after that, as somebody earlier said, things don't last, still need work. And so you can see there was another round of renovation that was done on it recently. It's, it's the, uh, the windows. The reason why they're getting an honorable mention award is because of their maintenance of the property. It turns out that the developer of this building did a fine job in doing most of the restoration, 
the choice of windows that they made um, apparently was not so um, good. Um, they haven't lasted very well, and so individual condo owners have come in to replace the replacement windows. Um, and so the staff and the commission has been reviewing those and come up with one that they think is, is more suitable. So we wanted to give them some recognition for the fact that they are trying really hard to maintain the building and make it so that it's not drafty and all those things that bad windows don't <laughs> give you. Um, and so that's why they're getting an honorable mention for tonight. It, it is now a condo um, situation. It was it fallen into quite a bit of disrepair. Uh, the city, um, through the commission, got a grant from the state to actually stabilize the building in order to make it enticing to a developer to come in to actually do the restoration, which was a huge undertaking. Um, but before that, the veterans and a lot of other nonprofit groups were in there, and it had really fallen into disrepair. So that grant made a big difference. Um, the, this work was actually done, I think, back in 2005. Um, but this is more recent work that's been done by the owners themselves. David Botchway here. Come on up. I see you like taking on little projects. This one was enormous. Tell us what it was like doing this. Um, well, I think one of my favorite features about the project was the duality of the project itself. Um, it's a very simple building, as in like it's very symmetrical, but it's very complex in like the details and like the intricacy of the building itself. And I really did enjoy it. Um, you know, first measuring it, which was horrible with the snow <laughs> everywhere, and then uh, later drawing it in AutoCAD. Yeah. Thanks. What year are you in school? Uh, I'm a junior in Sarawak High School. Yeah. We're looking forward to have you doing it again next year. And, and then after that? Uh, I'd like to either uh, major in mass communications or architecture. Mm -hmm. well, great. So thank you so much. We wish you luck. Okay, so um, this is coming to the conclusion of our ceremony. Um, I do want to thank you all for being here tonight, for doing the work that you're doing, um, whether you're a student or whether you're a property owner, um, as well as the people I mentioned that have donated um, food and other um, things to make this uh, ceremony happen. I want to mention that we have a couple of upcoming events. I just told you about the historic bike ride that we do. Um, we do walking tours, and this is Preservation Month. It's still May. Um, and so uh, we do walking tours. We did a Jane's Walk and an East Somerville Gilman Square one. Um, the last one will be the bike ride, and that is a, our opportunity to cover more ground, literally, on a bicycle um, from one end of the city to the other. So as I mentioned, one of the places we'll go to is the uh, Mystic um, project that we just saw that won an award. Um, we're going to be in Union Square. We'll start up at City Hall, and we'll stop at about five different places. It's a a, a, I won't say an easy ride, but it's a relatively uh, easy ride for most people to do. I have a three-speed bicycle, so this isn't one for just, you know, <laughs> uh, really experienced bikers. But it gives you an opportunity to see a lot of the projects that have happened in the city over the last couple of years. Um, the, oh, the day hasn't actually been finalized, but I think it's going to be Sunday, June 17th. Uh, with a rain date the following uh, Sunday. I have to say that when the mayor was mentioning all the historic events that we do this year in um, Somerville, that he is so much uh, so supportive of and behind, this was probably the worst year <laughs> conclusively that we have ever had in all of my years in working for the city. And as he mentioned, that's a number of years. Um, the flag raising day that we had this year for the first time ever, we actually canceled it um, because we wanted people to stay inside because it was so cold. The Patriots Day um, with Paul Revere's ride, we canceled the um, fair, the Colonial Fair, because nobody was going to be there. Paul Revere canceled that on his ride, <laughs> um, so that was a rain out. Um, and then um, we've had several other events that either the weather or um, some videotaping problems or any host of other things, things have gone wrong. So. Um, I'm delighted that tonight, actually, we didn't have any huge glitches. <laughs> we got through the whole ceremony. Um, and um, I do hope that you'll think about um, participating in other events. We have every year in the fall, we do a Union Square walking tour. And as you know, if lots of things are changing there. We want to try and capture that um, uh, um, for everybody. And again, I want to also acknowledge two people that I didn't before, and I'm very sorry I didn't, which is my two interns that have been working with me for this spring to make all these things happen. And that's Joyce Sanchez, who's going to raise her hand and wave at you. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and standing next to her um, is another engineer that just recently started and really helped with the PowerPoint um, situation, which was really um, was 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 a lot of work. Um, and that's Logan Capone. Um, <laughs> Both of these are students at BU in the Urban Affairs and Planning Program there, and, and have been a great asset, and I think now know a lot more about Somerville than they probably know about Boston. <laughs> Um, and so again, thank you so much for coming tonight, for being part of this. If you are a property owner and I can interest you in any of the tiles there, that's something that we would love for you to think about. Um, we also have a couple honorable mention drawings and such. And the only reason we ask for a donation is actually for the students' um, point, they're not going to get it, it goes back to the department. But it's just a way to say that you appreciate the work that they've done. So I hope you'll take a look at that. There's also a lot of brochures and other information over there that the commission is involved with. So feel free to take that. I hope you signed in and have a very nice evening.